Hello and welcome to this video tutorial. Today we're going to create a Gantt chart in Microsoft Excel. I have some data here. I have a list of tasks, a list of start dates and the duration for those tasks. The end date is simply calculated by adding the duration to the start date. We're not actually going to use that in the chart. It's not necessary, but it's here for reference purposes. Now we're going to use a stacked bar chart for this and this is what we're not going to do and I'm going to show you why. Selecting my data, I'm going to insert. I'm going here to the charts and we will choose a 2D bar stacked chart. That's really important in a minute. But right now you can see that the problem is that Excel has interpreted these dates as being part of the category headings, not the actual plotted data. And there's no easy way around this. So I'm just going to delete my chart and I'm going to start again. But this time I'm just going to select the tasks and the start date. We're going back to do exactly the same as we did. We're going to the insert tab. We're going here to the charts. We're going to choose our 2D stacked bar chart and this time it's different. This time Excel's going, oh, okay, so those dates were supposed to be plotted. Yes, thank you. So the next thing we're going to do is to add the duration and we're going to do it super simply. With the chart selected, all we're going to do is come over here, pick up this little icon at the bottom here or this little handle and drag it across. That's all you need to do. No messing around with the select data dialog. You don't need it because we've just got the data in that we need. Now we need to format the chart. These headings here, this data is being plotted in reverse order. So we're going to select the axis here, right click, choose format axis. Then we're going into axis options. We're going into axis options here. We're opening up axis options for the third time. And down here is an option called categories in reverse order. Just click that and then that matches market research is the first item plotted. The next thing we want is to actually remove these blue bars. Now we can't delete them because they're actually important, but we don't want to see them. So we're going to select on them and open up the Format Data Series dialog. If that's not visible, just right click and choose Format Data Series. And we're going to the Fill option and we're going to Fill, No Fill, so that we're not actually seeing that data. Now the next problem we're going to encounter is that Excel is still plotting this start date and there was a big element here that was plotted. We want to pull this shape here back to here. So we want to start our chart at a different beginning point. Now if you have a look up on a calendar, the 4th of December is actually a Wednesday and most businesses start work on a Monday. So I'm going to put in the Monday immediately before this date. Just in any odd cell, I'm going to type the 12th and it happens to be the 2nd is the Monday. So this is the date that is the beginning of the week that this date appears in. I'm going to come up here on the home tab of the ribbon and just click the drop down and choose general because this is the number that I want. This is the number of days between the 1st of January 1900 and the 2nd of December. And I need that number to start my chart axis. So I'm just going to click on this, right click, choose format axis. We're going across here to the Axis Options, Axis Options, open up the Axis Options dialog here and it's the bounds minimum that you want. And what we're going to do is type this number in. So now Excel is starting our chart on the Monday that is immediately before this date. But you'll see also that there's a 10 day difference between each of these dates. That's a default in Excel, but there are seven days in a week, not ten. So while we've got this dialog open, we're going to Units Major and we're going to make this seven so that now the spacing between our dates, if we could read it here, is actually seven days. It's a week. So these are all the Mondays in these months. Next thing is we're going to add some grid lines. We've got grid lines for the weeks, but we're going to add some additional ones. So I'm going to click here on chart elements and go to grid lines. If you're on a Mac, you'll find that you need to add your chart elements probably from the ribbon up here. There's an option for it. Let's go to grid lines and we've got our primary major vertical. These are the ones that are showing. If we want intermediate ones, we can choose primary minor vertical and that will give us the days of the week. And if you want horizontal ones, you could choose primary, minor, horizontal, or you could choose the major. It's just however you want to look at your data. I kind of like the minor ones better, so I might be using that. 
While we're here, we're also going to have a look at these dates because if you were to scrunch this chart up a little bit, you'll find that these dates start to run into each other. So we could actually rotate these headings again, clicking on the heading, again going back into Format Axis Dialog, but this time we want text options and we want text box. A little bit unusual, doesn't it's not sort of logical the way that we're doing this, but this is where the option is. And you can see here that we've got the vertical alignment, the text direction, and now we're going to add a custom angle. And if we want these to be angled in sort of this direction, we're going negative 45 degrees. So there we have our dates here on an angle. But of course, you can see the immediate problem is that this angle has run off the edge. And I did that deliberately because I want to show you how you can fix it. So here we have a chart, that's the overall area, and then there's a plot area. So if we go into the chart here and go to Format, in this list here we can select a specific area on the chart and we want the plot area. So the plot area is this little bit in the middle and we can shrink down the plot area so that's smaller inside the actual chart area. So just shrinking the chart area won't do it, but shrinking the plot area will. And so you can bring it in so that it's set inside the chart area. And now whatever we do to the chart area is still going to allow our dates to be seen easily. We just shrunk down the plot area a little bit. Now you can also do things like grabbing the grid lines. Let's see if I can grab this set of grid lines. Right click and choose Format Grid Lines and I could make these major grid lines a different color. So I'm just going to make them blue, for example. You could also, if there was something in your Gantt chart that you want to highlight, for example, product design finalization, I'm going to click on this to select the entire chart and then click on this particular element here to select it by itself. Right click and go to Format Data Point. If the dialog's not open, go to your Fill area and you could make that a different colour if you wanted to draw specific attention to it. We don't need this date cell any longer. It was only there for us to get the number from so we can delete it. You can't link to a cell so you couldn't link the starting point for this chart to that cell so there's no point in keeping it there because it's of no value because we've already used it. I think this is the simplest way to create a Gantt chart in Excel. I like it when I can select data for my chart rather than having to go through the select data dialog which is really cumbersome I think. So I hope you enjoy this process for making your own Gantt charts here in Microsoft Excel. If you like carefully researched content like this clearly presented in a step-by-step -step format so that you can get great results every time then you'll love my other YouTube videos. So give this video a thumbs up and click to subscribe to the channel. And on the screen now, you'll see a video that I've handpicked for you to watch next.